Welcome to online worship with Irving Park Lutheran Church. After a tumultuous and hard to fathom week, we begin this festival Sunday of the baptism of our Lord at the font, remembering who we are, citizens of the kingdom of God. May you be reminded of this foremost identity every time you take a shower or wash your hands or slake your thirst. Remember, you have been drenched with grace, and as the sacred rite calls us, we are to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to work for justice and peace in all the earth and in our nation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We thank you, almighty and creative God, for the gift of water, for the deeps over which your spirit hovered, for the oceans that surround this planet, for the polar ice caps, for the snow which blankets the land and laces the trees, for the rivers and lakes of our city and state and around the globe. We, we thank, thank you, O God, for the waters of the earth. earth. We praise you, gracious and empowering God, for the gift of baptism, for the water of the Jordan dripping down the crown of Christ, for the waters that Jesus walked beside calling disciples, for the water that baptized early Christians in Ephesus and Corinth and beyond as the gospel spread, a bubbling stream, for the water in fonts far and near that cleanses us from sin and makes us your own, for the water that bathes the church universal. We, we praise you, O God, for the waters of baptism. We worship you, triune God, and we pray Renew in us the gift of baptism. Wash away our sin. Birth us each day into life in your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Ocean of love, spring of salvation, cloud of mystery, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to you comes the worship of all your people, of every time and place, wherever we are. In, In baptism, baptism you have called and claimed us. We are the church. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis First chapter, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thunder 
mighty to conquer the power of death is power no longer and the lame will dance the blind will see and the dead will rise again for the word of God has walked with us and he makes us cry Today's second reading is from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Do you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, And to what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The Word of the Lord. According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's reading from the book of Acts is almost comic. Paul travels to Ephesus and meets some new believers and asks them if they have received the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing that I find amusing, that that is the first thing that Paul says. No niceties, no intros, not even a perfunctory, hi, how are you? Paul just plunges right in with, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Who does that? Paul does that. But the part that is even funnier to me is what they say in reply. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. They're believers, but they're unbelievably unaware of a basic element of Christian faith and are completely upfront about it, almost seem naively okay with it. What kind of Christian does that? I mean, it's, it's as if a basketball player, their team just two points behind with just a few seconds left in the game, they're completely unguarded at a certain distance from the net, but they just hold the ball in their hand and say, I didn't even know there was a three-point line. Or... It's as if a homeowner moves into a, a wonderful new place to live and, and they wonder where are they going to put all this furniture that they have and also where they'll put their mother-in-law and they just stand in the house and say, I didn't even know that there was a third floor. Or, or it's as if a cook who has a Kitchen Aid Mixer says, I didn't even know that there was a whisk attachment. Okay, well, maybe that last example is a little less fitting in scope and size, a little less stirring a comparison with the Holy Spirit, who of course is a key component of Christian faith. As Martin Luther says, adamantly, in his explanation to the third article of the creed, we couldn't even have faith at all except for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a wonderful, powerful force, even more amazing and advantageous than the whisk attachment. The Holy Spirit moves in us and in our world and makes things happen. Victories are won. Places are made habitable. Relationships are maintained because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can stir us. The Holy Spirit can take something that is small and slimy, like an egg white, like human nature, and make it into something like meringue, something voluminous, 
pure as snow. What kind of believers were these people in Ephesus? Well, they were believers who were living just at the beginning of the Christian movement. That's who the book of Acts is all about. It's about people who live just at or just after the time that God walked the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. These people in Acts might not have met Jesus in person, but they heard about what he said and what he did and how he died and how he rose, how in this person, God was revealing who God is and what God is about. And so also revealing who we are and what we should be about. The first Christians had a lot to sort out, sorting out how that all fits together. It's a lot to fit together. The creator of all things being known in the flesh and as an ongoing force in the world. The putting together of ancient Hebrew scripture and holy texts that were just then being written and circulated. The gathering for worship and sacred eating and, and washing, this engaging in practices that held them together as faithful people and, and guided how they live in the world. It's a lot. And so we should probably cut these Ephesians some slack that they didn't have it all down, that they hadn't even yet heard of the Holy Spirit. And we should also keep this scene in mind whenever we are tempted to pine for a simpler time long ago when people all got it, when faith was pure as in the early church. The story shows that wasn't the case. Clearly, as do numerous letters that Paul also wrote, epistles sent to people in places like Ephesus, texts which became part of the canon, the Christian Bible, which reveals in no uncertain terms that confusion and even conflict were very much part of Christian faith and life from the get-go. This scene from Acts should caution us from a false nostalgia for times past, as should the Bible as a whole. It's less a testament to holy heroes than a frank description of what people are like. It's shocking, really, what people are like. Attempts to repristinate earlier periods are doomed to fail. The absurdity of trying to do so would almost be laughable, but for what it leads to, what it overlooks, all we have missed historically, chasms in our understanding. We need to see the past clearly so that maybe we might see the present and ourselves more clearly as well. We might see we are not so different from those early believers in Ephesus? Have we heard that there is a Holy Spirit? Hypothetically, yes, but practically, discernibly, essentially, no. So many times, no, we don't act that different from these early believers in Ephesus, we just don't admit it. We don't take that shot at the basket. We don't make that move. We don't whip up delight. Or even more to the point, we don't even know that these are options. 
We don't even know these possibilities exist and that there's a power beyond that makes them possible, that makes us possible, that makes it possible for us to do what is impossible. Paul did not waste any time getting to what was important and getting it to the believers in Ephesus. Paul baptized them in the name of Jesus and laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them and their mouths and minds were opened. There is a Holy Spirit. These believers in Ephesus received it. We have too. We too have felt it and heard it and seen it. If we attend to scripture and to the wonders of creation, we can feel the rush of wind, the spirit hovering over the face of the deep and bringing all that is life into being. We can hear the spirit speaking through ancient psalmists and prophets and through artists and truth tellers and justice seekers and community restorers today. We can see the spirit alighting like a dove on Jesus, the beloved, as the spirit's wings flutter about and above every beloved child of God. There is a Holy Spirit. We cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called us through the gospel, enlightened us with gifts, made us holy and kept us in faith. Just as the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole church on earth throughout time and space in Ephesus. And wherever you are right now, whatever the events of the week prior and of the weeks to come, we have been given the Holy Spirit. Breathe it. Breathe it deeply and let your mouth be opened in prophetic speech. Let your mind be the mind of Christ. Let your soul be ignited to live life in the spirit, life for which you have been created. Amen. Sweet.
living together in trust and hope. Let us confess the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by the light of Christ, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church universal and all the baptized, that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we proclaim the gospel in word and in deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For wilderness and water, for wind and wild beasts, and all the living things that God has made, that God's goodness be revealed through creation, and that we as faithful stewards care for it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and for their leaders, for our nation in the midst of political transition and continued polarization, for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire those in authority and everyday citizens to work together for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who provide medical care, especially through the coronavirus pandemic, for all who are isolated, anxious, or lonely, for all who suffer in any way, in body, mind, or spirit, we pray especially for those we name aloud. Anna, the family of Annette, Randy, Furman, Zephany, Lauren, Lloyd, Joey and Christina, Carol Joy, Bill, Jim and Mary, Zentra, Judy and Joy, Aoife, Phyllis, Max, Eli and family, Elizabeth, Kristen, Ginia, Jessica and Lassie, Kate and Jordan, Deb, Catherine, Carl, Doris, Beth, Hillary, Sherry, Shannon, the family of Deanne Sherlock, especially Bill, Alice, and Dennis, James, Sonia, Patrick, Becky, the family of Rich, people affected by gun violence, first responders, medical workers, and researchers, our homebound, Angela, Florence, Ross, and their caregivers. For those we name in the silence of our hearts, shower us with compassion, comfort, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For students and teachers this challenging educational season, for this congregation as we continue to worship remotely, 
for our council as we plan for a new year, for all seeking renewal in their daily work, for all the saints who from their labors rest, especially Rich Wheelock, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. All these prayers and those known only by the Spirit who intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, we lift to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.